Hello and welcome to Pacific Dialogue. I'm your host, Yu Yuying. Did you know that education is a highly profitable export industry? Well, it is, especially in the U.S., where it's the seventh largest. Normally, in international trade, money flows into one country while products flow out. Not in this case, because the product never leaves the country. In this respect, China is actually running a huge deficit compared to the U.S. in terms of the exchange of international students. Last year, more than 360,000 Chinese students studied in U.S. higher education institutions, the largest among all countries. In contrast, the U.S. student exchange in China was only about 12,000. We asked a U.S. professor teaching in China. In general, American students don't know that much about the outside world and in general know very little about China. So uh, American education and American journalism are very U.S. centered. And so uh, to me, that's a big difference. Uh, the Chinese students are, are much more uh, focused on the entire world. But that's not the whole story. These Chinese students contributed $12 billion to the U.S. economy last year. Well, that is equivalent to 3 billion Big Macs, 15 million iPhone Xs, 300,000 Ford Explorers, or 120 Boeing 737 aircrafts. These Chinese students also created 150,000 American jobs. And we haven't even mentioned the top performing students who are retained in the U.S., causing a talent deficit for China. Over the years, returning Chinese students have not only brought back better English and whatever else they studied, they also have brought back Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, baseball, and hip-hop. In other words, the U.S. way of life. What's more, many countries agree that international students and scholars are one of their greatest foreign policy assets, helping them to stay in touch with future foreign leaders and business tycoons. But how does it work the other way around? Some American universities are shy about partnering with Chinese institutions because they fear that there will be limits on academic freedom. And, uh, and I have not seen, I have not seen that, and I think that some risk is inherent uh, in, in cross-cultural programs, but I think that the pluses just out, outweigh any risk, and, and I, I, would, I would just say the best thing to do is to move ahead. The best way to judge it is our track record, uh, our track record at Tsinghua and track record at American universities of cooperation uh, with Chinese institutions. Because Americans have a lot to learn from China. Chinese have a lot to learn from America, and being in a college environment uh, is one of the best ways uh, to have that exchange. So now we can see that these educational exchanges present great opportunities. Universities can be sources of strength in tough economic, political, and social times, said Harvard President Lawrence Bacow in his address to Peking University students in March. And we couldn't agree more. And don't miss this year's Harvard College China Forum. Beijing Review is a media partner. Thank you for watching this episode of Pacific Dialogue. Goodbye for now.